What do you get when you cross a baby cot and an old storage cabinet? Well, we're about to find out. I picked up these old panels for free from the marketplace. They were made of oak, so I figured they might make a fun project. This old cabinet was about $20. It's solid oak, really well made, it's very sturdy, and apart from a few watermarks and scratches, it's in pretty good condition. It was made to store DVDs, so it's probably around 20, 25 years old. I want to give it a creative makeover, leaving it with a new, elegant look. And to do that, I'm gonna try something I haven't done before. So let's get into it. These doors are really funky and they glide so smoothly. These hinges are awesome, perfect to accommodate these heavy doors. I'm going to replace these handles with something I make from scratch, but I'll save these as they might suit another project. I want to use the cot panels to create some decorative panelling on the front here. Because this isn't flush, I will need to fill this area in to give the panels something to stick to. So essentially I'll use the panels to create a nice pattern. I'm thinking something along the lines of this kind of shape that will repeat horizontally or vertically over the front. I'm going to need around 100 tiles so best I get cutting a few more strips. I could have used stripper here, but it would have been quite time consuming and very messy. Instead, I've gone for 80 grit sandpaper and it's doing the job pretty nicely. I later worked out that if I use a couple of clamps and a little pressure on the sander, I could get a really good workflow going. Now they are ready to rock, it is time to get the tiles cut. I want them to be all perfectly uniform as far as measurements go. And to do that, I'm going to use this hunk of burning love. This is the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. This machine has a powerful 40 watt laser module, but if you don't need something as meaty, you can get the 22 module. It has this racy, fully transparent cover, which suits my workshop, as I generate a lot of dust. And this tray catches all of the debris, which makes for an easy cleanup, always a plus in my opinion. One of the main things I'm loving is this extraction fan, which connects to an air purification system. These are due to be released by Creality in the next month or so. This is ideal for effectively filtering smoke and dust in small enclosed spaces. But it does come with the air assist and it is powered directly from the machine. This unique roll top is also a great safety feature, but check this out, a camera. I'll show you how that works soon. 
As mentioned, this is the 40 watt module, and that means they also include a 1.6 watt laser module for super detailed engraving. That is a very thoughtful and welcomed addition to the box. It also comes with these slats for the bed, which can be moved around as per your requirements. So let's put this to the test and get our tiles cut. First I measure up and then draw my design. Those drums you can hear are coming from the young man next door. Josh is learning the drums and I really enjoy listening. I design it in a row of four due to my material size and I lay my slats down on the bed. I then hit the update overlay to utilize the camera positioning function. This then allows me to move what I need to cut to suit the laid out material. The laser will then accurately cut as per what I can see on the screen. And this function is perfect for accurate cuts, minimizing wastage and saving time, especially when you can cut on more than one piece of material in one go. By hitting the frame function, it gives you a good idea of where the laser is going to be doing the cutting. And it is looking pretty much spot on, so I'm really happy with that, and we can hit go. These slats are 10 millimeters thick, but this can cut up to 20 millimeters in one pass, which is super useful for me as I don't have a table saw yet. And look at that, perfectly cut. This is extremely satisfying and will make laying these out straight on my piece a much less daunting task. Now to cut another 90 odd tiles. I now need to put a piece in here to help level out the face to stick the tiles down onto. Believe it or not, these slats that I was working with earlier are the perfect thickness. I don't need to get rid of these black marks as they will not be visible, but I do need to give the edges a slight sand as well as smooth the faces. I'll use 180 and 240 grit sandpaper.
it's now time to give the body a sand down. Let's take a cheeky break. Check out this dude's new number one fan. There are a couple of marks here on the top, so I'll give it a dose of oxalic acid. Whoops. Take two. I'll go over the worst of the marks first and then across the top of the whole thing. That is just to avoid blotches as oxalic acid will slightly lighten the appearance of the wood. I now want to make some handles using this thicker piece of oak that I got from the cot but I'm also going to use some of the scrap from the tiles as well. I've decided this might look quite nice with a brass inlay. This piece is what will attach the handle to the drawer front. This piece is the actual handle. And this line is where the brass will go. The brass is 3mm thick, so I created a 2.99mm line for a snug fit. The puzzle is what settings will engrave the correct depth, so I ran some tests varying the power output and the speed of the laser. The first line was too deep, meaning the brass appeared sunken in, but the next line was pretty much perfect, meaning the brass would sit nice and flush. Here is the handle face and the brass fits perfectly. And here is the piece to attach the face to the door. It's about 15 millimeters thick and that's done a really nice cut. I will need to clean these up, so I work my way from 60 through to 340 grit. The brass has a few faint scratches, so I start with 800, moving to 1500 and finishing with 2000 grit sandpaper, followed by some polish to get them to shine.
And now for the fun part. This will either be a win or a complete disaster. The placement of the first tile is crucial as it sets the tone for the placement of the rest. So far, so good. Thanks, buddy. After these have baked in the sun for a few hours, I tidy up the edges and sand the fronts to 340 grit. These handles are really starting to come together. 
I take off the sharp edges and get some dark oak stain on the go. Stain can be a sore spot for some people. I went with dark because I want to have a more timeless look. I'm not opposed to the light, but I do feel that would have been a bit more scandy, which is not the look I was going for. But you know, each their own light stain or natural would have also looked good too. Before sealing, I go over lightly with 800 grit to catch any little strays after the staining. I then give it a couple of coats of semi-gloss with a light sand in between coats. This piece has been a lot of fun to work on and I hope you've enjoyed the process. Please, if you would like to see more of my content and or support my channel, feel free to hit like or comment, both are free. You can also shout me a brew if you feel that way inclined. The link is in the description. If you enjoyed watching the recent MCM challenge on YouTube, you might be excited to hear that we have another one dropping in a couple of weeks. This time we are finding trashed furniture and restoring it to its former glory. So be sure to check that out. In fact, it could be wise for you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. Feel free to do that. Anyhow, thanks heaps for watching and until next time, take it easy.